Okay, we're going to get into how a separator works and we're going to talk single stage, three phase, indirectly heated, vertical or horizontal. And this is actually a pretty short portion of the class after I show you this. This is a separator. This is vertical. That's horizontal. You can see the water separation, oil separation, and the emulsion that is a combination of water and oil. And that basically is all a separator does. The things you have to do to get it to do it properly is what we're going to talk about. So I even shake this up a little. It takes a while to separate again, but that's what's coming in from your well bore. That kind of junk. But you can see already, just because I stopped shaking it, it's already starting the separation process. And if I let it sit long enough, it'll get some good oil on top of it here in just a little bit. So, a, a time to separate is part of what a separator is about. Um, vertical, horizontal, uh, so they have advantages one way or the other. We'll get into that a little bit. Simplified separation process, you're coming in through a two-inch pipe into your separator. We'll just make that, that lid be a, a representative of that. You're coming in at a velocity. It's traveling. This, this mass of the gas you can see up top and the, all the liquids coming in. When it hits this bigger vessel, there's a diverter plate in there that knocks it down and kind of breaks up the, the direction of the flow. And it's kind of like uh, the difference between blowing water through a soda straw or blowing the same amount of water through a two inch pipe. If you were trying to do it, you couldn't, couldn't blow, you could out of the straw, but not out of that expanded diameter. So what this does, it reduces the velocity, it doesn't reduce the volume. Still got the same amount of gas coming in. And the velocity increases again on your two inch outlet. But it slows down in the separator. And allows gravity to work. The water falls to the bottom, emulsion in between, and then oil on top. The length gives it what they call retention time. Comes in and it's got seven feet of retention time, of, of, of length, to stand in there. If you're coming in at a great rate, you may overcome the capacity of your separator. If it's coming in fairly slow, you know, not making a lot of liquid, maybe you have enough capacity, but you have to have that length to allow enough retention time for the oil to break out. Okay, liquids fall from the gas stream to the bottom of the separator. In the separator, the oil and water are warmed. You apply heat so that that separation process will happen faster. The warmer that oil, the more water falls out of it easier. The gas continues on through what they call a mist extractor that catches the droplets, drops them back into the liquid section. Then the gas goes on out the outlet of the separator. Basically to sales or to a dehydrator or compressor or whatever, whatever you got. Remember that the gas that goes through a separator is 100% saturated gas for that pressure and temperature. It's holding as much entrained liquid as it can. Kind of like humidity. So it's not dry gas, but it's as dry as a separator is going to make it. So you have to, that that uh, temperature is critical. The velocity you're going through there at is, is critical because you can actually carry liquids down line if you're putting more gas through it than, than you should. 